Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the TiVo Tarantula and why I think it could be one of the best budget 3D printers out you can purchase at the current moment of time. Now I got this thing maybe 5-6 months ago. It's still rock solid, still performing insane. I'm actually using it even more often now and it's been so reliable. But in the beginning it was a little bit of a different story. Now, I never really had any issues with the software side. I did have to invert the extruder motor and I had to uh, install the auto leveling sensor. Now, the auto, the auto leveling sensor that comes with it is absolute crap. Now, it is insanely retarded to install and uh, to kind of get it to work just right. But I've did something different. I used the auto bed level sensor at the same time with manual bed leveling to get a perfect result every time for a bed adhesion and I found that you know the build plate a lot of people say it sticks very well but for me it never really worked that well and what I usually tend to use is uh, blue tape the blue paint tape or whatever it's called that's just been working perfect like absolutely perfect um, I just get my spatula and remove the piece it sticks it adheres very good now some of the things where you know this thing kind of there's some mods that this 3d printer is going to need now some are a must-have some are not a must-have now one of when i was first putting it together i actually broke two acrylic pieces i broke the acrylic piece that holds the stepper motor for the z-axis because i had the end stop connected wrong and it popped that right off and i was devastated that was the first time i ever ran it to you know home home it in i was devastating but what i did is instead i just took it apart i just super glued it and it worked fine. It lasted me until I printed a new uh, Z axis part instead of the acrylic part to hold the stepper motor for the Z axis. And there was another time where the Z axis completely dropped before I installed the stepper motor and I broke one of the carriages that carries the Z axis up and down. And what happened here is you have four wheels on each side on two rails moving it up and down. And I ended up with one side, the right side. When the acrylic cracked, I was just running on three wheels. So I did have a little wobble. But it was still functioning, so I was very happy. And then I decided to 3D print that part. So it's very, you know, whenever you get a chance, I do highly recommend you start 3D printing the acrylic parts. It's, it's a lot better. Just do it in PLA. You didn't have to go in ABS. There's not a lot of stress on those components. But what I decided to go for was the aluminum kit. I got the aluminum kit because the carbon fiber was hella expensive. It was way too expensive. And I'm not going to pay that much. It cost as much as the 3D printer at the time, I think. So I got the aluminum kit, installed it, and it's just been rigid, beautiful. I've had no issues. The bed is pretty solid and rigid. There's not much wobble left in it. Now, another thing, as time went on, the cable management was absolutely terrible. And I decided to, step by step, just clean it up and try to set it up as best as possible. And as you can see here, what I've done is I've kind of taped the LCD wire, since you get two wires, together into one until I reached up into the top of the 3D printer. Now, as you can see right here, we have the, I 3D printed those holders, and trust me, those holders are a must have because, you know, that screen being all over the place is just very annoying. And sometimes you could catch in the bed and it's just, it was terrible. So I really do highly recommend you do that. The tolerance is very, very good on this 3D printed part. It just holds right in place. You don't even need a screw for it, but you will obviously need the screws to hold the uh, screen into those 3D printed parts. And overall that really just absolutely cleaned the whole overall build and the cable management really helped a lot. And another thing, what is a must have are the knobs for the level bed. Now I was always too lazy. I was like, no, I don't need those. It's just for lazy people. But you have no idea how precise you're going to be and how easy it is and how you're not going to hurt your fingers. Cause you know, the, the, the current knob that it comes with, it's, it's a pain to do it. You could all, you could easily misalign the whole bed. You could bump into the bed or just push too hard. And now the bed is misaligned again, depending if you didn't have it, if the bed super rigid. Now I printed these parts. They didn't fit in right away, but it had almost perfect tolerance. I just used a heat gun. I just heated it a little bit and I just pushed it right in. And this is not going anywhere anytime soon. See, as you can tell, it, it does come out. It's just very nice. So if I push, you can see it pop out a little bit and then it clicks back into place, which is just awesome. These are a must have. I don't care who you are. You have to print these. You should print these. Now, what else did we do? Also, you also, I would highly recommend you purchase a little fan and you 3D print a fan duct because this will come in handy and you will need this eventually for overhangs and all kinds of stuff. So you do need a fan because it doesn't come with a fan. 
So that's also something very important. And uh, overall, you know, once you get it aligned and running, it runs very good. Um, I've had no issues with it. Uh, another thing what I also did was a lot of people are complaining that because the heated bed comes with a connector that connects to uh, the heated bed from the controller unit. And what I did is actually ripped that connector off and I soldered, soldered those wires directly to the board and to the uh, bed itself. This way, I don't have to worry about plastic melting or something catching fire creating a big short circuit or something so that's something i also did which i also think is uh is is you must do to be honest it's a lot safer and obviously if you know how to solder it's a lot safer and it's a lot better for you and plus the current can go through a lot better that way and overall you know this printer has just been reliable i'm not i'm not even thinking of getting another printer um once you get it tuned and the learning curve is very nice it's not too steep but it's just in the middle but it'll give you a lot of good information a lot of good knowledge to uh go about whatever you want to do 3d printing cncing and it just opens a whole new door for you like i've been doing all kinds of stuff for example this right here this is terrible because the i had the temperature wrong on filament but this is an adapter for my CNC machine, which will allow me to make a test draw before I uh, go ahead and cut something out just to make sure everything is good and I have everything aligned and all that kind of crazy good stuff. So you can do anything your heart, you know, you desire. For example, these right here, I live in Europe. So, you know, this is like a one euro thing. When we go shopping, you have to stick these into the shopping cart to take a shopping cart. So I've just been printing a lot of these and giving them, you know, to my in-laws, to my wife's friends, to my friends, the DHL guy, to the UPS guy, <laughs> you know, just, you know, those people. And you don't understand how this little gesture right here just, you know, makes people very happy because, you know, you just put it in your keychain. Now you don't have to worry about having one euro coin with you all the time. Now, I know in the U.S. it's different and I used to live in the U.S. And, um, you know, I, I'd never had that in uh, California. So I, I, this is here. It's all new to me also. So uh, but these are very useful. I really love these. I, I'm Every day I print around four. Um, I just keep them with me. But as you can see here, you know, it's just printing good. You know, I'm not having any issues. Uh, well, there is one issue sometimes I do get the extruder because uh, I'm using the Bowden and I could not print Ninja Flex for the life of me. I do it, I do have the Titan extruder and the Flex extruder, but I'm not about to change the uh, extruder. I'm not I'm not. I just got it tuned and I really don't care. So there was other mods where we could do, but I haven't I tried one of them was with the little white tube where you could cut it out and it, just, it didn't work it, for me at least it didn't work i tried like four of them i just gave up on it so flexible filament is just done i don't play with abs even though abs printed good the bed level is pretty good uh also the temperature of the nozzle plays back and forth between five degrees so let's just say you set the nozzle to 195 degrees celsius it'll it'll drop down once it hits like 189 it'll jump back up to it'll turn it on to heat up the nozzle again and it'll jump over around five degrees so it'll be within a range of around 10 degrees i would say so if you put 95 degrees basically throughout the print you're printing between 190 to 200 degrees that's how it, that's how it works so uh but i know it could be it's probably a software issue but maybe they fix it i mean we're still running old software uh i, I do not want to change it just yet and because everything you know for what i need it's running perfect for me um i my tolerances are pretty good i haven't done any of those testing you know prints like the tolerance from makers muse and all those kind of crazy stuff i remember planning on doing those in a little bit but right now i'm just kind of busy just preparing everything because i do have a lot of projects coming up and I want to make sure the printer is running uh, very well. But this is an update video on, you know, my take on the TiVo Tarantula. It's been very good. Um, I can actually turn it on and leave it and I could trust it to finish the build. As long as obviously the filament doesn't snag and, and that kind of stuff. But I mean, everything else is just fine with me. Um, just a couple mods. Obviously, nothing comes out perfect out of the box. You just have to do a little bit here and there. And uh, you could get this thing running within like three days maximum if you have a lot of issues. But the most important thing is to have it tuned and aligned. Very good. That means, you know, just level your bed. And what you have to do is just make sure your, your X axis, you know, just put a ruler down and tell it to move 10 millimeters or 100 millimeters and make sure if it actually moves those. And there's a calculator online you could find uh, if it's moving less, it'll tell you how to change it. It's, it's pretty simple. And then your Y axis and then your extruder is a little bit tricky. What you do, what I do actually, is I just mark it right at the point where it's going to go in. 
and then I make it move like just say 10 millimeters and it'll start moving the filament in 10 millimeters it, it still would not have hit the nozzle just yet and then uh, once it moves those 10 I'd mark it again and pull it pull the filament out get a ruler and just measure the amount of space it moved and then based upon that I'd make my changes and it's a very simple process and it just works very nice and that, that whole process took me like less than 40 minutes to do so it was pretty easy and pretty simple but overall you know this 3d printer is pretty awesome i will do be i'll do more tests and showing you guys more of the 3d printer as time goes on if you guys would like to see that also and um this is just my take if anyone's thinking of tivo torrential it's a very good deal in my opinion uh just 3d print some of the acrylic parts uh as much as you know as many three acrylic parts as you can uh so you don't run into a problem where you break apart and you cannot super glue it and then now you just can't print with it. So just take that into consideration. You can even make it out of wood, I think, if you if you wanted to. Uh, they're just you gotta just get the holes just sharp, just right. That's it. So overall it's a nice little uh, 3D printer. It's the one I've been using and um, I have no complaints. It's it's not, you know, once you get it right and you bed level and you just know the basics, you're gonna be totally fine. And it'll do everything you want it to do and more. Um, I don't see any bad issues with it. I've never had an issue actually with it. I mean, once you have it all tuned and everything's running, no, never had a single issue, uh, except breaking the acrylic, obviously, but that's, you know, it's acrylic, what do you expect? And it's a very cheap little uh, kit, you know? It even came with three extruders. It came with the Flex with me and the Titan and the Bowden, but I installed the Bowden because at the current moment of time, everybody was using the Bowden, and, you know, I, I thought if I had an issue, I could easily find support for that topic. Uh, with the Bowden because you know the flex I do I still have the flex and the Titan but I just do not want to install those um, at all so well that's it so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video this was just my take on the 3d printer um, I think it's a very good 3d printer and you will have a learning curve but that learning curve is is actually gold uh, you will learn a lot from it and um, and um, it's that it's it's overall it's a very nice one like I, I i can't complain about anything except the acrylic parts uh that i cannot emphasize that enough you know it's not it's not i'm just saying i'm like bitching about the acrylic parts no but really the acrylic parts are very very fragile so just be extra careful when you first put it together like right when you put it together and you're about to home it for the first time Make sure your hand's right on the power just to yank it off. Because once you see it hitting the bit, that's it. Pull it off and then adjust your Z, your Z axis, your Z end stop. And all that will be an instruction manual. The instruction manual is pretty clear. There's a little couple missing steps, but there weren't hard steps. You could just take a look at a you know video. And you can see how you install it and you'll know how to install it. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it took like maybe four hours or five hours to build. It didn't take much time at all, actually. Um, and well, that's it guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to see more of this 3d printer, let me know down in the comment section. Um, and please consider joining my Patreon. Help me support this mission. Help me support the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll have a link to the 3d printer link down below if you're curious about that. And that's going to conclude it for this video guys. So, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys. Take care.